After all the trees were destroyed, humanity forgot about the existence of nature. Then a young man and a mysterious old man joined forces with the mission of reforesting the world and saving humans from pollution. Today we're going to recap the story of the 2012 movie, The Lorax. Thanedville is a busy city with little nature. The streets have hardly any plants or flowers, all the vegetation is made of plastic. The inhabitants have had no contact with natural beauty, so they can live happily with their artificial plantations. The air they consume is sold in gallons, so citizens pay to breathe it. People are convinced that pollution in a completely urban environment are ideal for humanity, to the point where they are grateful to have, for example, places to park their cars. The sale of oxygen is dominated by the O'Hare Corporation, which shamelessly profits from the huge amount of pollutants consumed by humans. To make matters worse, company executives feed the lie that nature is evil, so this discourse is spread so that the organization continues to make more and more money. Ted is a teenager living the typical local life, which is monotonous and predictable. He is in love with his neighbor, Audrey. To see her every day, he always throws his ball at her house, only for her to answer the doorbell. That day, the boy buys a toy airplane. His plan is to land it at his classmate's house on purpose, so that the girl will show up to talk. The boy's idea works and the small aircraft is placed inside the young redhead's house. Then the girl opens the door and talks to her neighbor, inviting him into her home. When they enter the house, Audrey shows her neighbor a beautiful piece of art. When he sees it, Ted is impressed by the beauty of the painting, which is based on the legendary truffle tree trunks, a type of plant typical of the region, but now extinct. Audrey tells him about the beauty of nature and reveals how much she loves trees. Above all else, the girl's dream is to one day see and have a seedling in her backyard, and she even says that she would fall in love with the person who gives her a plant. At that moment, the boy realizes that he has a chance to win her over, and all he needs to do is find a plant to make his wish come true. The problem is that he has no idea how to find a real tree, after all, the Needville doesn't have any fields, forests or anything like that. While having dinner with his family, Ted asks his mother how to find real vegetation, but the woman doesn't react well, because according to her, nature only offers disadvantages. With a remote control, the color of the artificial treetops can be changed. They even play music, which is seen as an advantage. The boy's grandmother, who has seen nature up close, tells him that there is someone who can help him with his goal. His name is once Lur and he lives in a region that is banned and forbidden among the town's residents. Ted is interested in the story, but the old lady charges 15 cents for more information. Upon discovering the whereabouts of this unknown being, the boy gets on his motorcycle and rides out of town to find out who can help him. In Thanedville, an evil and greedy businessman called O'Hare is watching a performance by his employees. The officials present a new business model, which aims to deliver bottled air to the people of Thanedville. The plan is to contaminate the oxygen even more to force the population to buy this product, because they know that consumers will buy anything that is in a plastic bottle. This is a perverse idea, since citizens will need the air containers to breathe and this pleases the millionaire very much, who approves the creation of this commodity. At the same moment, the security guards show the man that a teenager is about to leave town. Ted begins his journey and realizes that the land outside Thanedville is dark, dangerous and polluted. Throughout the streets, there is a lot of rubble and obstacles, which almost hit the boy several times. His path is complicated and dangerous. The boy has to pass through mountains and gorges, but he manages to do well. When he arrives at his destination, which is the street of that missing Lorax, he realizes that there is only one house there, with three crooked floors. It's strange, but it's the only place once Lur can be found. The teenager gets closer and closer to the house, but is not well received. The mysterious, unkind man catches Ted with a mechanical hook and threatens him, but calms down when he discovers that the young man is only looking for information about the plants. The boy says he wants to find the trees in true nature, so once Lur sets him free and decides to tell him everything he knows about real vegetation. After all, it's rare for anyone to be interested in its origins. The man doesn't leave his house, so he uses a loudspeaker to narrate the story to the boy. Years ago, when he was still young, the old man left home to travel and create his invention, called, The Need, even without the support of his family. He set off on his journey and, a few days later, with his donkey, he found a beautiful valley full of special creatures in a vast field of truffles. When he got there, he took his tools out of his bag and prepared to extract the natural resources of those mystical lands. The animals saw this and didn't like the idea at all, but they were quickly seduced by the marshmallows given to them and gave up trying to expel the human. However, the creatures realized what a big mistake they had made when once Lur pulled out his axe to start the clearing. At that moment, the animals panicked and ran for cover. Soon, however, once Lur's act began to have consequences. When the first stump was cut, 
A bolt of lightning tore through the sky and struck the tree stump. At the same moment, a mythical being was born. He was short, orange and with a big blonde mustache, his name was Lorax. The newly arrived little man, together with the other creatures, made a farewell ceremony for the cut wood, after all, it too was a living thing that would be missed. The strange creature was the great guardian of the forest and was furious with the young man. So it demanded that the boy leave the place, but to no avail. He decided not to obey the Lorax's order because he didn't think the little thing was as powerful as it claimed to be. Once Lur was again advised to leave, as he would be cursed before sunset if he stayed there. At this point, the man interrupts his story and asks Ted to come back the next day to hear the rest. The boy is excited to hear what the old man has to say, but he feels even more committed to fulfilling Audrey's wish, to the point of fantasizing about the moment when he gives her the seedling and then receives his long-awaited romantic kiss. The next day, his grandmother encourages him to continue his investigation and Ted prepares to return to the mysterious man's house. The boy then gets on his motorcycle and follows the same route as before, but this time he is stopped in his tracks by O'Hare and his men. The millionaire already knows all of Ted's plans, as he has been monitoring the teenager through the security system. Now he wants to know why a city dweller is so interested in nature. At that moment, the boy tries to change the subject, but O'Hare threatens him and orders him not to go back to Onceler's house, because the secret of the trees could affect and bankrupt his industry's entire artificial air business. After all, vegetation could give it away for free to everyone and that's an unacceptable idea for the tycoon. The villain makes it clear how powerful and dangerous he is, as he has surveillance everywhere, but Ted is a boy in love and is willing to do anything to make Audrey's dream come true. For the sake of his beloved's happiness, he starts up his motorcycle again and heads for the city's exit gate. Leaving Thanedville, he returns to the old man's dark house. Once Lur is surprised to see that Ted has returned, as he thought the boy wouldn't show up again. Then he discovers that the boy's interest in nature is only because of his beloved, but he still decides to go ahead with the story. In the past, when he was younger, he chose to ignore the Lorax's warnings and continued to extract the wood from the paradise he found, so the guardian of the forest chose to seek the help of the animals. In the middle of the night, the animals broke into once Lur's house while he was sleeping and some of the bears took him to the lake. Other goldfish picked up the young man's bed and set him adrift in the river, but a bear cub ended up getting stuck next to the human. The two were carried away by the water and approached the falls, so to save the little animal from danger, Lorax decided to help the two. The guardian of nature threw a huge rock to propel the bed out of the riverbed, and the human and the little animal were saved. At first, once Lur was moved by the orange creature's help, but when he discovered that it was also responsible for the trap, he was furious. The mustachioed man recalls that his actions were motivated by the deforestation that the young man was causing, so the young man was convinced by the ideals of the little mystical being, since this attitude was weakening and weakening the local fauna. At that moment, he swore that he would never again harm any plant in those lands. The next day, when he woke up, once Lur noticed that all the animals, including the Lorax, were in his room and took the opportunity to finally show off his newly created Thanid, which resembles a large scarf. He used a bear as a model and mentioned all the advantages of the invention, but the little orange one wasn't impressed at all. Later, once Lur presented his creation in the city through a song, but his idea was not well received. When he tried to hum about the benefits his play would bring to everyone, the locals jeered and attacked him with tomatoes. The poor guy was so repulsed by people that he discarded the Thanid, as it had become yet another public attraction of humiliation and humor. When he threw it away, the fabric ended up flying to a young girl. Accidentally, the beautiful woman used it as a hat and all the townspeople began to love the new fashion. Disappointed, once Lur decided to return to the forest with the idea of living there, but a crowd of humans in love with his product followed him. The young man's life changed completely. Just then, the story is interrupted again and Ted returns to Thanedville. He is driving through the streets when he meets Audrey. However, when he tries to talk to the redhead, his grandmother interrupts him and climbs on his motorcycle, forcing him to go back to the house. Upon returning to her home, the redhead is surprised. The entire drawing on the wall in her backyard has been devastated and the perpetrators are employees of the O'Hare Corporation. Later, Ted is also affected. When he tries to leave the city through the main gate, it is revealed that the gate is closed. But nothing can stop him, so the young man chooses to take the most dangerous route, which is a huge free fall. The teenager approaches once Lur's house to hear more about the disappearance of the trees, then the old man tells the story again. At the time, after the Thanid explosion, his family visited him in the forest. His mother was surprised by the young man's success and said that from the beginning she knew her son would do well in life. However, the Lorax was not at all happy about the situation, let alone the arrival of once Lur's relatives, 
but the human convinced the little guardian that no one would harm nature. The whole problem started when the young man's relatives manipulated him into increasing his production, but in order to do so, he had to cut down more and more trees. Then, blinded by greed and manipulated by his own mother, the young man brought in urban machinery to clear more and more of the local vegetation, which caused terror and fear among the animals native to those lands. All the creatures were terrified of the man, who broke his promise and went on to invade and devastate the nature of that paradise. While humans grew richer and more powerful, animals drowned in pollution, as in the case of fish, which were forced to swim in filthy water. Arrogance and a thirst for power corrupted once Lur. His company grew bigger and bigger and was in the spotlight of fame, but in return, the whole forest had disappeared from the map, because his plan was to turn every truffle into a thanid. The pollution from their factories has affected animals in the air, on the land and in the water. All the forests are on the verge of extinction. The Lorax was extremely hurt by the once Lur, who only recognized his mistakes when the last tree was cut down. Man regretted what he had done, but it was too late, because no plant could resist deforestation. When all the trees became extinct, his entire empire went down the drain. When all the vegetation was no longer there to filter the air, oxygen became increasingly scarce, making it difficult to breathe. Then the young O'Hare realized that the inhabitants would need a new way of breathing fresh air. So he had the brilliant idea to start selling clean air, which was the source of his wealth. As for once Lur, his companies and industries went bankrupt and his family, made up only of self-interested people, left him alone. The human was devastated to see all the harm he had caused, because now all the animals in those lands had to move to distant lands. The Lorax used his mystical powers to return to the heavens and, before leaving, asked the young man to reflect on his actions. After that, the young man was alone and regretful for the rest of his life, living in solitude and isolation in that strange house. Hearing the whole story, Ted is saddened by the great tragedy that has occurred in those lands. As a last hope, once Lur leaves the only remaining truffle a seed in the teenager's hands. The boy's duty is to plant that sapling in the city, to show people the real nature and how beautiful it is, and to make them aware of the importance of trees. Determined, Ted takes that last bit of life from the forest and returns to his town, with the aim of reviving nature. Returning to Thanedville, he asks Audrey to meet him at his house, but obviously nothing will be that easy. The dozens of cameras in O'Hare's security system not only locate the boy, but also detect that he is in possession of the seed that the businessman fears so much. Arriving at his home, Ted is surprised by the presence of the millionaire and his two huge bodyguards. The trio search for the seed that the teenager possesses, but Granny Norma manages to hide it without allowing the man to confiscate something so important. The teenager's mother is surprised by the situation and throws all the evildoers out. She then asks what's going on, and her son explains the whole plan. The matriarch of the family is in possession of the sprout, which, when given a small amount of water, starts to germinate and grow into a large plant. Watching this miracle, the three of them are thrilled. Minutes later, Audrey arrives at her neighbor's house, who immediately pulls the girl inside. When she sees the seed, she is impressed and mesmerized by the possibility of restoring nature. So the family sets up a plan of action. Mrs. Wiggins drives off in her car with her son, then one of the guards chases her. The chase is intense and the two run all over the city, until the woman reaches a dead end. When O'Hare's henchman approaches and opens the car door, it is discovered that the boy in the car is nothing more than a doll that imitates Ted's appearance. On the other side of town, the boy, his grandmother and Audrey cross the streets on his motorcycle while being chased by an airship. The businessman and his other henchmen get into the act to chase the trio and free fall into the city, using a flying helmet to chase them. However, they end up being run over in the middle of the road. When they arrive in a park, Ted and his friend try to plant the seed, but they can't dig it up. All seems lost, until Norma turns up with a tractor and manages to dig out all the space needed for planting. In the end, the big machine only serves to form a small hole and destroy a large part of the area, including a statue of O'Hare. All the citizens around realize their intentions and get scared. The teenager insists on explaining why he wants to plant a real tree, but people remain unsure about his attitude, as they don't know the real importance of preserving nature. The situation worsens when O'Hare arrives on the scene and manipulates the population, spreading false information about nature and claiming that the vegetation would have bad consequences for the city. Fortunately, Audrey interrupts him and says that the trees would bring fresh air to human beings. At this point, the millionaire begins to despair and insists on telling more lies to everyone. Little by little, the citizens come to believe the villain's fallacies, so as a drastic measure, Ted uses the tractor to dig a huge hole in Thanedville. The crater allows everyone to see the outside world and how it has been devastated by the lack of vegetation. 
Seeing the outside of the city for the first time, everyone is shocked to see such darkness. The boy pulls out his little seed and shows that a flower is sprouting. This proves that there is still hope to change the destroyed landscape outside the city. Desperate, O'Hare tries to dissuade people from this idea, but it's useless, because even his own employees abandon him and join Ted's cause. The businessman's fear grows as the boy's support grows. The townspeople listen and understand his dream and goal, so they decide to help him. Everyone joins the trio, who finally manage to plant the last remaining seed and give life to the first of many trees that will revive the forests. As promised, Audrey kisses Ted and the boy's grandmother waters the little sprout, which blossoms and gives rise to several other plants, which begin to grow around the city. Later, the old once lure finally leaves his house and notices that the paradise of the past is being rebuilt. Then, after several decades, he meets Lorax again, who returns to tell him that the old man is finally achieving his redemption. The old man hugs his old friend and they both feel happy, laugh and get emotional. Together, they celebrate the return of the fauna and flora, which are no longer artificial, but life in its purest state. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.